So you got FL Studio, you got your new microphone. In this video, we're going to go over all the steps you need to take in order to be able to record within FL Studio. If you already have everything set up and you want to learn how to record effectively, you can jump over to part two. This is a three-part series where I'm going to go over setting up recording, my recording workflow and template, which will have you looking like a pro, as well as my process for comping vocals in FL Studio. If you haven't hooked up your microphone yet, then please make sure that you plug it in via USB or an interface and that all of the drivers and or potential software is installed for your devices prior to us taking the steps in this video. So please like and subscribe. Let's get started. So if we're in an older version of FL Studio, we're going to record audio like this. Test, test, test. And our audio will come in to whatever is available. And if we're in a newer version of FL Studio, we're going to record audio like this. Test, 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 test. Now, in order to get to that point, there's a few things that we have to do. First things first, if you're in Windows, you have to choose an ACO audio driver. So you'll most likely have FL Studio ACO, ACO for all, or if you have an interface, you'll have an ACO driver for that interface specifically. My Focusrite, I have Focusrite USB ACO. The rest of these I have are just kind of extra. Don't worry if yours does not look like mine. Now, if you're on a Mac, you need to give FL Studio permission to use your microphone, and you may need to aggregate your audio via Apple's MIDI setup utility that they've got going on. Next thing we'll do after we've got that set up is we will come to our mixer and we will choose a mixer track that we want our audio to come through. We can go to the top here and we get our options. You'll most likely only get a couple. And if you have one microphone, you're going to want the mono options. Stereo would be for a dual microphone setup. You'll see my voice here as well as here where it's already set up to microphone one. Something else that happens when you do that is you automatically get this red button lit up here. This is called your arm button. And if that button is not red and lit up, it will not record the audio of your vocal. So to show an example, I've got it set up on this vocal, microphone one, red button, record. Check, check, check. We're all good. If I turn it off, Check, check, check. We've got nothing. Now, even though you have a microphone selected and you've pressed your arm button, you still might not be able to record yet. And so let's go over the reasons that that might be so. And so far, the things I'm going over is universal for the older and newer FL Studios. I'll show you the newer FL Studio stuff in a second that can make this a lot easier. So the next place we're going to need to check to make sure we can record audio is at our record button here. We can right click it and it'll give you a filter telling you exactly what it's going to record. So if you want to record audio, audio needs to be checked at this location here. Notes will be MIDI information, automation will be MIDI automation, stuff like that. But what we want is audio. Now, if you want to know about these options, I have a toolbar video above. You might notice sometimes you record and things come in automatically muted and other weird things might happen. That's going to be due to your blend recording and loop recording options. I've got a video on that above. And when you get all set up and go to start recording, if when you speak, you hear yourself back extremely late afterwards, that is due to latency, which you will have to fix in your audio settings section here, where I've got an in-depth video. Again, you can click above. So if we close this out and we get to the new little setup here and the new setup for FL Studio, you can link tracks to mixer tracks. So a bunch of these I have in a template so I can always load up for specific scenarios and all of these are pre-routed. But to route, I can right click something, track mode, audio track and assign it to any of the inserts I want. And then it'll give me an arm button where I can arm to record, which is linked to this button here. As you can see, it's shut off. We have our audio input source, which is linked to this here. And then we've got another button, which you won't really see on 
older versions of FL Studio. And that is this right here where we can select which area we're going to record. So the way the flow works through your mixer is the signal comes in up here, goes through all these effects slots where you can load in effects, runs through this EQ, comes out at the bottom right here, and that's going to be where your mute, fader, and all those knobs are at, and then it leaves the track. So we have external input only, which would be my microphone and just my voice. We have external and mixer input. So that would include any other routing, like if this one here was routed to 33. Now 35 is routed to 33, so I'm going to get my vocal as well as anything coming from this mixer track or any other input. We've got post effects, which will have us record after effects, but before the CQ. Post EQ is after this EQ, but before our level and panning. Level and panning is after level and panning, but before full export of the track. Post track is after export of the entire track. Now, when you're recording, if after messing with your audio settings, your latency is still really bad and you can't stand hearing yourself, we have a monitor external input off button. And so now what's gonna happen is when I turn this off, I am no longer going to hear myself. I still have volume coming here, but there's, I, I can't hear it. When armed, when I unarm this, I'm no longer going to get any signal. Let me unmute that so we can actually hear me. So I'm no longer getting, a, getting any signal here because it only monitors when armed, but then I can just straight up turn it on. And now it's monitoring 24 seven. If you are in an older version of FL Studio, and you don't want to hear yourself, you got this little thing going, just unhook it. Let me turn this back on so you can hear me. Just unhook it, and then that'll stop going through. My vocal here isn't hooked, but I have it going out to a direct out to my screen recording software. So that's why you can hear me on this one with it unhooked, if anybody noticed that and is wondering or caring. So, but generally when you unhook it, you will no longer hear it anymore. And the cool thing about that is that we can still record. Is that we can still record. And something I didn't state, which I probably should have, but you also probably got from this video, this record button needs to be on in order for you to record. And you can quickly turn it on and off by clicking the letter R. So I hope that was helpful. In summary, we choose an ACO driver, which is going to make our microphone detectable. We choose the microphone on the mixer track of our choice. And then after we choose the microphone, we make sure that mixer track is armed. And then we arm our recording button and we're good to go. If we still don't hear any audio, we can right click our recording button, which will give us options we can shut on and off. And we want to make sure the option for audio is turned on. If you have a newer version of FL Studio, we can actually hook up a playlist track directly to a mixer track and record from the playlist, saving steps and buttons and helping with organization. Now, if you don't see my aforementioned recording template video, it probably has not dropped yet. I post every four days, and so it'll probably be up four days from the time of this video. These videos take a lot of work, so please subscribe and hit that bell notification button if you want to see that when it comes out. If you like this video, please like this video. If you have any comments, please comment. I always appreciate a subscribe. It's Warren with Scale Audio. Adios.